The cheesy and delicious pizza that everyone is addicted to actually has a way longer history than just being a typical Italian dish. Bread with toppings, like pizza, was available in many ancient countries. This may be the inspiration for the birthplace of modern pizza in the city of Naples, Italy. Naples in the 18th century was a thriving riverside city, but that resulted in a large number of poor working class people. These people needed affordable food that could be consumed quickly, and pizza, a flatbread with various toppings sold by street vendors, was the perfect choice. However, most Italians outside Naples didn't know about pizzas until the 1940s. And this was only because the dish got so popular in America. Immigrants from Naples to the United States recreated their tasty, trusty, crusty food in many big cities such as New York, Boston, Chicago, and soon pizza received love from millions. And now we have international pizza chains like Domino's and Pizza Hut that thrive all over the world. Americans love fast food, and no other food is more iconic than the sandwich. But at one point in history, Americans wanted to forget about it. The sandwich owes its origin to the gambling addiction and cleanliness of John Montagu, the fourth Earl of Sandwich, which is a noble title in the peerage of England. Legend said that he spent countless hours at the card table and asked the servants to bring him something to eat without getting up and wouldn't make a mess. Well, that's why the sandwich was born. Soon the food got very popular in England, but didn't appear in an American cookbook until 1815. This is because American cooks wanted to avoid cooking things from their former ruler. But once the memory faded away, the sandwich quickly became a national food. And nowadays, Americans eat more than 300 million sandwiches a day. If you need a motivational story, Look no further than lobster, the luxury meal that you gotta pay a bunch of money for. The backstory of lobster is somewhat like the culinary vision of Cinderella. It started with a humble beginning and ended up in the highest social class. Back in the 1700s, lobsters were so plentiful that they piled up on the shore and got the name cockroaches of the sea. Sounds gross, right? And due to their abundance, people started to grow sick of them. So lobsters were primarily used as fertilizer the dish was also considered chicken meat for poor people or fed to prisoners. Some even revolted against being forced to eat lobster. Just imagine that. But as the American rail transportation system began to develop, lobsters were served to passengers and quickly gained more attention. The demand increased, so did the price. And soon, lobster was no longer a thing for the poor. The dish turned from cockroaches into riches. The rarer, the more valuable, I guess. While food resembling donuts has been found in many countries, the earliest origins of modern donuts are traced back to the so-called oily cakes that Dutch settlers brought in with them to early New York. These donuts closely resembled what we have today, but did not yet have a hole in the middle. The word dough is for the sweetened dough, while the word nut is used in the earlier sense of small round cake or cookie. For the hole in the middle, it's told that Hans and Gregory invented the ring-shaped donut by punching a hole in the center with a tin pepper box on the ship he was living on. But this story still remains a debatable topic. Have you ever dunked donuts into tea? It's quite tasty, yeah? Anyway, for the origin of tea, it all started in China. Legend has it that almost 5,000 years ago, a divine Chinese emperor, Shun Nung, tasted thousands of different herbs to test their medical value. Unfortunately, one day he encountered 72 poisonous herbs, and that was way too much for his body. He fainted under a tree, and suddenly, the dew from the tree's leaves dripped down into his mouth, and he quickly recovered afterward. He was saved by the healing power of the tree, and from that moment, tea has been an important part of Chinese culture for thousands of years. When the Dutch started importing tea, it quickly became a fashionable drink among the wealthy. Through time, tea got more affordable, and the rest is history. Do you want to know what else is popular that comes from China? And it ain't COVID. Ketchup. It turns out that the word ketchup is derived from the Chinese word for a type of fermented fish sauce. When the Brits brought some sauce home, they tried to replicate the dark sauce with mushrooms, walnuts, and oysters. But when tomato ketchup first appeared, it quickly became a smash hit. 
Then when Heinz introduced their famous ketchup, America just found a new food religion. Do you know what goes well with a bit of ketchup? Spaghetti. And just like ketchup, spaghetti may find its origin in China, not Italy. Wait, what do you mean by saying spaghetti is not from Italy? Calm your Italian spirit down and let me explain. Marco Polo and or many Italian merchants of his time were regarded as the ones who brought spaghetti from China to Italy in the 13th century. However, some historians may not agree with this theory, as pasta already existed in ancient Rome and Greece. This is debatable, but let's make it clearer. There are many different types of pasta, lasagna, penne, macaroni, fusilli. And while you can find these types of pasta in ancient Rome, there seems to be no spaghetti. I found some sources claim that evidence of spaghetti was found in Etruscan tombs from centuries BC, and they often have this image. But here is an original image of this piece of art. You can also just go ahead and search yourself. The keyword is Etruscan tomb painting. Look at the right side. Do you see any spaghetti here? I don't know who added spaghetti to that image or why they did it, but thumbs up to your Photoshop skills and thumbs down for distorting the truth. So pasta might not be from China, but spaghetti, it could be another story. And you can't deny that spaghetti highly resembles Asian noodles. Of course, there are several other theories about the origin of COVID, I mean spaghetti. If you know some of them, feel free to share with us in the comment section below. Again guys, it looks like many famous Western foods actually come from Asia. Ice cream. The tasty summer treat is considered to be from Mongolia. When nomadic tribes brought milk through the Gobi Desert, the milk was frozen, and that's how people got inspiration to come up with ice cream. Then, the explorer Marco Polo, this guy again, was believed to have seen ice cream being made during his trip to China and introduced it to Europe. Also, the expansion of the Mongolian Empire could be a factor in making ice cream popular. Let's end our video with a classic New York food, the hot dog. But why is a dog here? Well, it's probably because German immigrants brought the red-hot Dachshund sausages with them to the US. And because Dachshund also refers to the German's small, long, thin dog with the same name. People somehow just use the word dog for the dish. Dachshund is a little bit hard to spell, you know? Dachshund dog, hot dog, forget about it. So the question is, is a hot dog a sandwich when it's also got two slices of bread with meat? That is for you to decide. Share your thoughts in the comment section below and subscribe for more tastefully smart videos. Thanks for watching.